This is Ezekiel Drews, host of Podcast, A Star Wars Story. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Oh, the sweet, sweet tones of Luther Vandross. That could only mean one thing. March Madness is back. Hi, everyone. I'm John Lauder. And I'm Christian Heimel. We host the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast on Mondays. We're excited to invite you all to the first ever Public House Media Bracket Challenge. Now is your chance to prove that you know more about college basketball than we do. And then hear Johnny and I complain about it each week. Oh, that's for sure. All you have to do is check out our Facebook page, the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast. Find the link and enter. Only one entry per person, though. Prizes will go to the top listeners, especially the ones who beat out public house media hosts like John and myself. And don't forget to be eligible to win. You must like both the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast and the Public House Media Facebook pages. That simple, guys. Two clicks. Like the pages, join the group, and good luck in the inaugural Public House Media Bracket Challenge. Throughout history, the course of sports has been shaped by one thing. The fans. From the moments you never dreamed of. Moments that still give you nightmares. Behind the bag, it gets through Buckner. Here comes Knight, and the Mets win it. He's in. Patriots win the Super Bowl. Brady has his fifth. Through the good and the bad, fans have helped change the games we watch and the players we love. They may not be the most logical people. You are a factory of sadness. I'll see you Sunday. But they know their teams better than anybody. They'll blow in the ninth. You may not always see them, but you know where to find them. After all, there's nothing quite like the view from the cheap seats. Broadcasting as part of the Public House Media Network. Grab a chair and enjoy all there is in the the cheap cheap seats. seats. Oh, yes, it's finally that time. It's here. The cheapest seats that you could find in March Madness, which means the ones on your couch. That's that's what's going to happen here. Is yes. The brackets are set. Chris and I will John Laundry here with you on this Monday, March 12th, uh, Bracket Monday, as I guess we should commonly refer to it as, since everybody's going to start filling yes. out their brackets here. Um, we've had Selection Sunday. We had all that fun go through. And now we get a chance to just sit back, analyze, and wait for the games to really begin coming up here. The first four, obviously, tomorrow and Wednesday in Dayton, and then it really gets going on Thursday uh, but, John, I mean, this is one of those times where it's just a lot of fun to kind of hang out, see what happens. But uh, before we get to actually breaking it down, because this whole show is going to be about breaking down the brackets and getting you guys ready to compete in our bracket challenge, Public House Media's bracket challenge presented by the Cheap Seats. You can go on our Cheap Seats Sports Podcast Facebook page, check out the Public House Media Facebook page as well. Make sure you like both of them, but enter in a chance to beat John, myself, all of our other Public House Media uh you know, people and hosts. My favorite thing about this so far is that John's got the best name of I hate all, I'm always wrong or something like that. I hate being wrong is John's bracket. <laughs> yes, John. I hate so. being wrong. Yes, 100%. So John, yeah, I'm, I, I, I finished filling out my bracket. I hate it. I'm angry about it. I've already thrown stuff at the wall and we haven't even really started here yet. I just, oh God, I, it's such a frustrating science trying to fill this thing out because look, you know, un- unless you're, you know, John Rothstein locked in a basement for five months straight, <laughs> nobody has seen all of these teams enough to really right. make an educated, you know, uh, an educated pick on every single game. I-, I consider you and me to be, you know, pretty well-informed college basketball fans. And when you have to sit and think about, you know, whether New Mexico State or Clemson is going to win a 5-12 game in the Midwest bracket. It kind of makes you just want to punch yourself in the face. So that's kind of where I'm at right now. Um, my bracket's done. I loathe it, but I will be doing the integrity bracket. I will not be filling out another one. This is going to be it. I'm not going to be one of those people that fills that's out 35 like different brackets. I, that That's just a pile of garbage. So I, I, I that like is something I will not be doing. So before we break this all down, and, and again, this is how we're going to do it here so that everybody knows. We're going to go south region first, then we'll go uh, to the west, the midwest, and then the east bracket uh, to, to round things out here. Before we get to all that, John, I actually start breaking down uh, these matchups here. Your biggest surprise when the field of 68 was announced on Sunday? Uh, Syracuse. Um, 
They're the worst. I loathe them. I have nightmares about Jim Beheim, and uh, I just do not understand why they were selected. Now, I know the team you're going to say. I won't say it yet, but I know the team you're going to say, and they were certainly a surprise as well. I am a very big fan of the Ken Palm ratings. Um, that's kind of my, you know, Bible, so to speak, when I, you know, look at at college basketball and sort of where teams sit. Now, everybody's got a different thing they like to look at, BPI, RPI, ABP, DMV, whatever. Um, but I like the Ken Palm ratings, and Syracuse is 54th in the Ken Palm ratings, whereas St. Mary's, my biggest snub, was 28th. Okay? Uh, yeah. St. Mary's won 28-5. All right, so 28 wins on the season, top 30 in Ken Palm, and a win over 30 in four Gonzaga, but yet they can't get in. And a Syracuse team that lost 13 times and is ranked 54th in the Ken Palm gets in. Uh, you know, why so much love for Syracuse? Just, uh, just Jim Beheim needs to go away, and Syracuse needs to bottom out like UConn has. That's how I feel about it. Yeah, I, I don't, I don't know to be 100 percent honest. And, and you're right, the team that I'm going to. Uh, a mention, I mean, that should be in there, and I agree with you. St. Mary's is one of those squads that probably should have been in as well, but this is what I don't understand. Louisville. How Louisville is not part of this field of 68 is insane to me. You talk about Ken Palm. 33rd in Ken Palm ranking. 36th in RPI. Uh, USC is below them in both of those categories. There's going to be 40th in Ken Palm, 34th in RPI. Um, uh, St. Mary's is another squad that just looks a little low there. Notre Dame is, is a team that should have been in there. Uh, St. Mary's, again, 28-5, uh, 20th in the top 25, and 19th in the, in the coaches' poll, which is the insane part about that, uh, is the fact that you got a team ranked in the top 20 in, in the country, yet they're not one of the 68 teams that's in the field uh, is insane to me. No. I get it. Louisville, Louisville had a terrible record against the top 50 in RPI. But, yes. I mean, Oklahoma oh, – the fact that Oklahoma gets in, it, it, another 13 loss team, a team that was just as bad against the RPI. I mean, they maybe they, they granted they had a couple wins against the, the top 50 in the RPI, but Oklahoma is in for one reason and one reason only: Trey Young. Because and, we I, talk but, and about, I'm sorry, I personally am fine with that because I want to see him. And, I, but this I, is the problem. I, it's, I, a, it's a TV yeah. show. It's a TV show. And he is sure, the most marketable is. player in the country this year, whether you like it or not, because we don't care about Grayson Allen and Duke. We don't care as much as I've – my favorite part about the ACC tournament, by the way, was watching Theo Pinson for North Carolina. Nobody oh, cares about him. You know, nobody cares about Miles Bridges. Nobody cares about Jalen Brunson. Right. They care about Trey Young. That's who they That's care about. We don't even care about Kyle Guy and the stupid man bun anymore at Virginia. It's all about <laughs> Trey Young, and that's the reason why Oklahoma gets in, and that's what bothers me more than anything else about this, because they did not deserve to be in this field of 65, 68. Yeah, that's fair. I mean, you know, any team that's that's going on, you know, 13 losses is kind of tough. Uh, I mean, you know, Butler obviously got in um, as a 10 seed. They were 25th in the Ken Palm. They're 20 and 13. Mm-hmm. Uh, I mean, yeah, to me, St. Mary's is the biggest snub. I, I'm not as bothered by Louisville as you are. Um, I, I kind of feel like, you know, they, they've got some other issues they need to be dealing with. But, yeah, for what Notre Dave Dame Patrick was tough. This year, they probably deserve to be in. For what Dave Patrick Yeah, that, that <laughs> is fair. And and Notre Dame, if Bonzi Colson had played the whole year, they probably wouldn't have 14 losses. That's fair also. Um, Baylor, a team we didn't even talk about. I know they have 14 losses, but they're 34th in the Ken Palm, which is way higher than Oklahoma. Um, By the way, yeah, Oklahoma US... only won four of their last 15 games. Correct. Yes, they were 4-11 and to finish the season, so it's really terrible. And it's hilarious to me that UCLA, who had two less wins and a lower Ken Palm than USC, gets into the Trojan Stone. I mean, <laughs> what, what, like, what are we doing here? I don't understand Ugh. it. And it's not like Lonzo Ball's playing for UCLA anymore, so there's, not, there's no point in watching them either. So No. All right. But, you know, one more thing before we move on here. People, you know, getting bothered by, like, Middle Tennessee not getting in. Stop it. Okay, they're a mid-major team. They didn't win their conference. But they're John, not St. Mary's. Here's, here's the problem. Stop it! Though. Stop it! Here, listen, it, it, I, I agree. With you and I both come from a mid-major school that got yes, we, that we both believe got screwed out of the NCAA tournament a couple of years ago. Um, it's uh, true. If not, you know, when when they lost to UNC Wilmington, of course we're talking about Hofstra University. Got that lost to UNC Wilmington uh, in the championship game of the CA tournament and didn't get in that large bid. I worked in a conference that. 
was one of the last mid-major conferences to have an at-large bid in Iona six years ago when Monmouth should have had an at-large bid two years ago. Um, you know, you look at VCU, you look at George Mason who get at-large bids. Uh, those schools, here's the issue. The problem we have with these mid-majors not getting in like Middle Tennessee is the same problem we have with the idea of amateurism in college basketball. You told us when you're going to expand the field to 68, it was to get more of these mid-majors in, and that hasn't happened. That's the issue that people have. Should Middle Tennessee State be in under the old rules of 64 teams? No. But when you expand to 68 to allow more mid-majors in, yes, they should be in there. And that's that's where the biggest but, issue but is. But not over St. Mary's, though. No, I agree with you. Not over St. Mary's at all. All right, we're here in the cheap seats as we get sent for our bracket breakdown. Christian Heimel, John Lauder here with you. First off, don't forget you can check us out uh, on the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast Facebook page. Be sure to go there and get your information to sign up for our bracket challenge, a chance to win some great prizes from Public House Media and the Cheap Seats. You can also follow John and I on Twitter. Follow John at, at J-O-N underscore L-A-U-D-E-R. You can follow me at Chris Heimel, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I. M A L L. All right, Johnny, let's start in the South region with the number one overall seed in the Virginia Cavaliers. You look at in this bracket, and a lot of people are picking some upsets here with regards to uh, the way that Arizona has played. You look at Tennessee as a, a, a three seed, Cincinnati as a two seed. I know you love the Bearcats, but the biggest question I think here is the number one overall seed, Virginia. Is this the year that they have the ability to make that Final Four, possibly that national championship game? Yeah, for sure. They've been tremendous. And one of the thing that you were talking about before, make sure also on our Facebook page you answer our daily poll question, and that's going to be who is the biggest NCAA tournament snub. Since both of us seem to have really kind of gravitated towards one team, we're going to go St. Mary's or Louisville. So who is the bigger <laughs> snub? Obviously, I'm all about St. Mary's. Christian's all about Louisville. There were other snubs as well, but, you know, we're not going to have a poll with 10 different teams because we're no. going to get confused. <laughs> Um, so we'll go with St. Mary's of Louisville for that. So make sure when you go to the Facebook page to answer the poll question as well. But yeah, Virginia, this year should be the year. If this isn't it, I don't know what year it's going to be. They're the best. Now, I put this in my notes. They're the best quote unquote team in the country. And not just because they've got the best record and they're the number one overall seats, because they're the best overall squad from top to bottom. There's no standout star. Nobody's going to the NBA on this team. There's no Malcolm Brogdon or Justin Anderson. But. When you talk about Guy and Jerome and Hall and uh, and you know, Hunter, they just have so many players that, that fit together. And Tony Bennett uh, is the best coach in, in the country this year. He's one of the most underrated coaches. Uh, he shouldn't be at this point, but he probably still is. Uh, and they're just so good on defense and so balanced and disciplined on offense. And as a North Carolina fan watching that ACC tournament game, that ACC championship game, it was like I was pulling my own teeth. It was so hard to watch. Every time North Carolina got close, UVA just stamped right out on them, and they are just so deliberate offensively, so good defensively as well. Adjusted defense first in the country by almost two points per game, and it's one of the best, I think, in the last 15 or 20 years. Uh, they've just had an insane season, and this – this has to be the year for Virginia. If it's not now, I don't know when. Yeah, it, it's really hard for me to pick against them, but it, it's so strange for them to be the number one overall seed. I see a lot of teams in here that could trip them up. I mean, Cincinnati, I think, is a very good team. Um, but but to me, Clark's Cincinnati's – yeah, Cincinnati's Virginia, but just not as good. And, yes, and I yeah, like I Cincinnati, agree. but they're and, and very listen, similar. You know, what Rick Barnes has done at Tennessee is tremendous, uh, and I think the Vols have had a tremendous season. Guys like Admiral Schofield and Grant Williams are a lot of fun to watch. But here's the part that really trips me up in trying to pick UVA to come out of this region. In this Sweet 16, they're going to have to face Kentucky. And there is no team in the country playing better right now, in my opinion, than Kentucky. Um, and I, I understand the defensive prowess of Virginia, but that Sweet 16 matchup is going to be interesting. And it is scary how good Kentucky has been over the last two months. Breaking down the South region here inside the cheap seats on the Public House Media Network, John Lauder and Christian Heim will be with you as we always are on Monday. See, I think Arizona's going to beat Kentucky, so I don't even think Kentucky's going to be a problem here. Yes, they've been amazing, but one team has DeAndre Ayton and the other team doesn't, uh, and that's Arizona. And I do believe that the winner of that game, whether it's Kentucky or Arizona, is going to give Virginia their toughest test. Because, again, I like Cincinnati. We talked about this earlier when we were you know, texting prepping for the show. 
Gary Clark's been really good. Cincinnati is an excellent team. They, to me, they they had an argument for a one seed. They, did. they didn't get it, of course. Xavier did, but Cincinnati had a definite argument for a one seed. Uh, and I do think Arizona and Cincinnati, and you know, I, I guess Kentucky, could give UVA uh, a run for their money. But UVA hasn't even given up seventy points this year. That's insane. Yeah. And and I just don't see how any team, unless Aton's going to score thirty five points, I don't see how any of these teams are going to be able to score enough to beat Virginia. I, it, so I think we, you and I are. We've only seen it here. twice this year. Yeah, I mean, I think you and I are in agreement here. As much as I like with how Kentucky is playing this year, and it pains me to say that uh, as someone who yeah, loathes Kentucky, uh, oh, I think you so and I are much. both in agreement here that Virginia does come out of this region uh, at, heading to San Antonio for the Final Four. But, John, where do you see the biggest potential upset here in the South region? I am all over Loyola Chicago. I've got them in the uh, Sweet 16. Really? I've got them beating Miami and Tennessee. Love them. Love Loyola Chicago. All over it. The they have Ramblers. not been in the tournament in 33 years. They're going to ramble all the way into Cincinnati, and then Cincinnati's going to punk them. But, uh, <laughs> yeah, th- that's my – that's actually – I've got two double-digit seeds going to the Sweet 16. I'll reveal the other one later. Uh, but, yeah, I really like Loyola Chicago. I think Miami. It's probably because I don't like Jim Laranega, but I, I, I'm just not – you know, that, that goes back to our Hofstra George Mason days, yeah, as you know. Exactly. But uh, I, I, I just don't think Miami's that good. Um, and Lonnie Walker's been really up and down. Their best player was Bruce Brown. He's out for the rest of the season. Um, I, I don't. I think Loyola Chicago is going to win that one. And as good as Tennessee has been, I just don't think that. I just don't think they're that good. Um, and I like it. I also, you know what? I I don't really feel all that good about the SEC except for Kentucky. Um, yeah. Because you know, I'll I'll sort of give up. You know, one of my later picks. I I have Auburn losing in the in the round of 64 as well. Uh, I, I just don't feel great about the SEC outside of Kentucky, but that is my upset. Uh, where are you looking for an upset? I, I like Loyola Chicago. I ha- I do have them advancing past Miami. I have them losing to Tennessee, though. Uh, and here's why. It's the same reason why I have Texas as probably the best chance at an upset. Yeah, um, that's fair. I consider Texas. that, too. Yeah, Lindsey Drew for Nevada. And for those of you who don't know the Wolfpack, Lindsey Drew is their best player. He's their number one guy. Uh, he tore an Achilles last month, uh, so he's not going to be able to play. And that really hurts him. And I love Muhammad Bamba. I love this dude. I know he missed the last couple of games of the year, but he's a lot of fun. And I think Texas matches up well with Cincinnati, um, as much as I love the Bearcats and I've been all over them. Um, but I think Texas has the biggest chance for upset here in the South. Yeah, and, and I, I feel like all the 8 nines and 7 tens, they're not really upsets at the lower no, seat they're not. Um, I mean, I picked Nevada, but I easily could have gone Texas as well. And, you know, a lot of the times for me with the seven tens, I did not pick a 10 or a 7 beyond that round of 32 anyway. Right. So I almost, you know, sort of didn't care because I, I, I really like all the two seats this year. Um, you know, but... This uh, two yeah, line is te- incredible. This two seat is. line is, is unbelievable. And so, and so is the three line. I mean, yeah. you know, this is a really deep tournament. I, I feel like it's the deepest in a while. Going to be a lot of fun here. we got a lot more to break down as well. So John and I are both in agreement here. We believe Virginia coming out of the South? Yes. Yeah, I've, I've, I've got Virginia over Cincinnati in the regional final. Yeah, I think you and I actually have the same one, even though I do think Cincinnati probably the they pose the biggest chance at an upset with Texas uh, there in that second round, I think, there. So when we return, we'll break down the West. Xavier, the number one seed there. They, to me, might be the least deserving number one, but we'll get into that in just a little bit and if Johnny's UNC Tar Heels can make it back to defend their national championship it's all coming up in the Chief Seats Coffee with Keith and Katie here on Public House Media Once you are done with this episode I hope you'll come check out my show Coffee with Keith and Katie where we talk about the adventures of our daily lives and relationships A new show comes out every Tuesday and Friday at 8.30pm Central Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Coffee with Keith and Katie Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media Go big or go I have a prediction right now that both Keith and Katie do better on the bracket than me. <laughs> and I think all they do on their show is drink coffee, right? Basically. I mean, Keith was in D.C. last week, from what I understand. He was hanging outside the White House while Katie was sitting on the couch. So, 
So he was you drinking know. coffee outside the White House, or you're yeah, me. and Katie was, you know, on her couch drinking coffee. But and they're and they're, and they're both going to do better on their brackets. God, I well, I already now, hate but here's this my question though. We'll have, to, we'll, we'll have to get Keith and Katie on the show at some point. But I want to know since like are they do they fill out one bracket together? Or are they each going to fill out a bracket like for the show? Like I don't know what's going to happen there. That's going to be a fun one to to figure out there with them. But. Do they pick their teams based on how they relate to coffee? These are the things I need to know. <laughs> that, that's probably the reason why they're going to beat us in our bracket challenge. And, of course, you guys can beat us in our bracket challenge as well. Just go to the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast Facebook page as well as the Public House Media Facebook page. Like both those pages. Get the link to join us on uh, on our 2018 Public House Media Bracket Challenge here. Christian Imel and John Lauder in the Cheap Seats. Don't forget to go to our Facebook page as well. Vote on our daily poll question, who is the bigger snub? Johnny St. Mary's Gales, my Louisville Cardinals. Uh, I think I know the way the public's going to vote on that one, but I'm still going to hold strong to my Louisville Cardinals. And you should. <laughs> David Padgett loves you. <laughs> he might be the only one. Yeah. All right. All right. So let's go to the West region. Um, the, uh, oh, Xavier, they're by far the worst number one seed. I'm not even <laughs> sure they should have been a number one. Quite, quite frankly, if Duke or North Carolina won the ACC, they would have been the last number Agreed. one seed. Um because they lost twice to Villanova. I know they won the Big East regular season, but then they lose to Providence, who, look, I mean, Providence should have beaten Villanova as well. Right. You know, Cooley is such a good coach, and even though Providence really doesn't have anybody like a, you know, like a Chris Dunn that really sticks out, they've been tremendous, and they're in this um, bracket as well as the 10th seed. Uh, this is a really, really interesting region in the West, because you can make a strong argument that Xavier is... Not the not the best team, or the second best team, or the third, or even the fourth or fifth best team. <laughs> you can yeah. make an argument that UNC, Michigan, Gonzaga, and Ohio State are better, and I'm not going to go this far, but Houston's pretty good too. So this yeah. is a ridiculous bracket. There's Houston's a chance. The bracket, I think here. Yeah, there's a chance that Missouri beats Xavier in the second round if Michael Porter Jr. plays well. Oh yeah, and there's a chance that there there are guys at Florida State, and I've watched this Florida State team for the last couple of years. Yeah. There's a chance they could come out and win. I mean, Terrence Mann is impressive. Phil Kofer is one of my favorite players in the country right now because of how he is able to just get everybody involved. I love Florida State uh, out of the ACC. Now they're a team that I don't know if they necessarily deserve to be in here, but I like the fact that they are. But you're right, Xavier easily could be the the four seed here going up against UNC Greensboro. Instead, you're going to get Gonzaga. And I know the Zags are a team that a lot of people have been down on, especially after last year and, and how they kind of took everybody's hopes and, and crushed them. I love them. Not you. I know that. Uh, but, I mean, Mark <laughs> is a great coach. Listen, Xavier is a team that easily should be a, a three seed, in my opinion. UNC or Cincinnati should be the number one seed in this region. Um, but, uh, again, it's just one of those things as I look up and down this, like you mentioned, I mean, there's so many potential. This is where – that, that seed that everybody's talking about that doesn't expect, this is the bracket where the number one seed goes out the earliest, easily, and it yes. could be in that round of 32. It's certainly possible. I mean, I do have Xavier gain to the Sweet 16, but then I've got Gonzaga uh, taking them down. Um, again, I know that they don't have, you know, Nigel williams Goss anymore, they don't have Zach Collins, but, you know, they are still a really good team, very deep, 30 wins again. Mark Few is... One of the best. I mean, we all know this at this point. <laughs> Gonzaga hasn't been a mid-major for a decade now, but uh, they're fantastic. Um, obviously, I feel like North Carolina is going to go pretty far. And Michigan, you know, I, I know you said Kentucky. Michigan is my team that's playing the best going into the tournament right now. Yeah. I mean, they they just dominated the Big Ten and made, you know, uh, multiple teams in that league just look stupid. And John Beeline, always a fantastic coach. But his team's playing the best defense that they probably have ever played under Beeline. And that's not typically what you expect from him. They're 10th in Kempom, 28-7 and on the season. Their adjusted defense is 5th in the country at 92.7, uh, uh, right there with Texas Tech and, and Tennessee. Uh, you know, Michigan, Michigan could have been a 2 seed. Uh, that's how deep I feel like this whole situation is. And you yeah. mentioned you thought Xavier could have been a 3 I mean, if you had had North Carolina as a one, Michigan as a two, Xavier as a three, would anybody really have batted their eyes? Probably not. No, not at all. Um, so th this West region is going to be insane. Yeah, and, and you know, and to be fair to you know to Michigan, there, I think the reason why I, I say Kentucky is their hottest team right now is because 
the Big Ten tournament was a week early this year. <laughs> That's you right, know, that, yeah. that we haven't seen Michigan in so long, so that might actually play into their benefit here, uh, which, yeah. which could be interesting uh, coming down. I mean, Michigan, you're right. I mean, they beat Michigan State and Purdue in back-to-back days to win their second straight Big Ten tournament. John Beeline's tremendous. Uh, Moritz Wagner is one of my favorite players. Uh, and then, of course, th- the best name in college basketball right now, other than Muhammad Bamba, is Muhammad Ali Abdur Rahman. Like, this, this dude is awesome. Like, he's got two great boxing <laughs> names in his name. Yes. It's awesome. Um, and so you, you look at them, and, and they're a team that I think uh, they might be that team, and I won't go so far to say it just yet, but they might be the lowest seed Michigan to make the Final Four here this year. Yeah. Um, I mean, look, in this bracket, I've got the top four teams going to the Sweet 16. Uh, my only As do real I. upsets are Providence over Texas A&M, and I don't really think that's that much of an upset. Now, I do have South Dakota State over Ohio State, mostly because I just Same. like the name Jack Rabbits. Um, <laughs> and that's basically it. I, I've got chalk the rest of the way, and look, I agonized over Michigan and North Carolina, okay? I know uh, you as, did. It, as, as everybody should know at this point, I, I bleed Tar Heel Blue as, as, a, as a Michael Jordan uh, disciple, um, you know, but look, North Carolina is not going to the championship game three straight years. It's just not going to happen. And even though when they play well, they can beat anybody, um, if they're not getting out in transition, they're not making threes, they can have problems. And we saw that against Virginia. And I just think with how good Michigan is defensively this year, as hard as it is for me to do this, I picked Michigan um, wow. over Gonzaga to uh, go to the Final Four. I'm not happy about it. I hope I'm wrong. I would, I would take great joy in being wrong there. Uh, but I, I do have Michigan uh, going to the Final Four. Yeah, and, and I mean, listen, I, when I look at this, and I, again, have, have the top four teams there uh, in the Sweet 16, uh, I, I do think I, I didn't pick Providence over Texas A&M simply because as much as I love Ed Cooley, what Chris Beard has done there uh, at Texas A&M, and actually, you know what, now that I think about it, i, I got to look at this again. Now that I think about it, with Texas A&M really kind of struggling to find themselves over the last couple of weeks, it, I may have to go uh, Providence here in this one. Uh, so I may have to change this one on the last second, and I'm, and I'm going to here. I'm going to go another 10-7 upset. But I love the South Dakota State pick because that's that's my biggest upset potential yeah. in this round is South Dakota State. And it's it's not because of their you know their awesome team name, which is a great name, by the way, in the Jackrabbits. It's the fact that not only do they score the basketball, but they defend so well. I mean, you look at their point differential on average this year is at 16 points, uh, uh, you know, which is – uh, tremendous. Excuse me, 11 points this year, which is a very solid note. They've they've been playing great over the last couple of weeks, uh, 11 and one in their last 12 games. And what bothers me about OSU is they are so hot and cold. Ohio State. Yeah. I understand Chris Holtman is a great coach, uh, coach of the year. Keita Bates do- uh, job as a tremendous player, 19 points, nine rebounds a game. But this is a team that not only did they go out and beat, uh, you know, some tremendous teams. They lost three times to Penn State, um, and, and that bothers me. So they're very hot and cold, and the fact that the Big Ten tournament was so long ago, I don't think they've got the same gumption. I don't think they can hype themselves up enough to beat South Dakota State in that first round. So I got the Jackrabbits there, but again, chalk uh, the rest of the way pretty much. Um, and I, I'm going to go with you here on this one. As much as I, my, like I said, my favorite part of the ACC tournament was watching Theo Pinson because this kid is so talented in finding passing yeah, that's what I was amazed by, is his yeah, court ridiculous. vision is tremendous. Joel Berry and Luke May are great seniors, and, and that game might be the game of the tournament, to be honest. Michigan, UNC, in the Sweet 16, that might be the best game you're going to get. I do have the Wolverines going ahead of it. I do think Xavier yeah. sneaks by Gonzaga, because I don't think, you mentioned Nigel Williams, Goff, and uh, and Collins, but how about Karnuski? How about the fact that Jordan Matthews isn't there anymore for Gonzaga, either two seniors? I mean, this is going to be a really entertaining game here with Xavier and Gonzaga, but I do have uh, I do have the Zags bowing out, and I do have Michigan going on to the Final Four. Uh, breaking down the West region here inside uh, the cheap seats on Public House Media, John Motor, Christian Heimel with you. Make sure that you're getting involved in the CSPN Tournament Challenge. Um, the cheap seats, Public House Media, ESPN Tournament Challenge, because you want to beat me. It's one of the great joys in life. Uh, if you like um, the Cheap Seats Facebook page, if you like the Public House Media Facebook page, 
you can be um, eligible to win prizes. Do we know what the prizes are, Christian? Yet is it going to so be like an we, inflatable it, dog? It, you know, it's a like, lot of uh, branded stuff. So I know there's, I know there are uh, T-shirts. I know there are stuff. coffee. Is it going to be a Keith and Katie coffee mug? It, listen, it might be. It might be because I have I've heard whispers of a public house media online store coming soon. Oh, where snap. we could have we could legitimately have cheap seats like phone cases and coffee mugs and uh, and T-shirts and all that stuff. So I will purchase anything with my face on it. <laughs> well, we can we can get something for that for the fans. We can get them in there. So that'll be a lot. No of fun. one would but buy that. We we do know that there will be a, a, at the very minimum some public house media T-shirts. We do know that at the bare minimum. Very nice. And also make sure you listen to us on iTunes, Google Podcasts, Breaker, Stitcher. You know, tune in all, radio. all those other. Yeah, tune in. Um, you know, if, if you're using you know just two cans with a string together, that works too. Whatever you've got to be able to listen to us. Um, one other thing I wanted to mention with this region, I feel bad for Houston. <laughs> if they were playing anybody else in the round yeah. of 32, I probably would have picked them. And if they were in any other bracket, I probably would have had them going further. They just happen to have to face Michigan in the round of 32. Houston, uh, with Calvin Sampson, I mean, despite all the trouble that that guy has been in yeah. over the years, this is his fourth team that he's taken to the NCAA tournament. And in four years, he has... You know, brought Houston, look, not back to five slam jamma with Drexler and Anders and Nalajuan and all those guys, but um, Houston is a really good team. They played Cincinnati super tough on Saturday, and, you know, they, they're they a good team. And, they're a great team. Or actually, yesterday, not Saturday. Um, I, I, I feel bad for Houston. I, I, I would have loved to, <laughs> you know, pick them further along, but there's just no way that, that Michigan's losing that early. Yeah, no, I, I completely agree with you. I mean, it's it's one of those things where it's going to be, um, like I said, this I think this bracket is the toughest one, and it's the reason why, uh, as I look through it to kind of tease the other two regions we got to talk about, it's the reason why I have at least in my bracket the lowest seed, uh, po- the lowest seed that I have advancing to the final four is the three seeded Michigan Wolverines out of this bracket. Yeah, so that'll do it for us on the West region. When we come back, we'll move on to the Midwest, Kansas. Can they make it to the Final Four with Devontae Graham leading the charge? And will either of us even dare to pick Duke in the Final Four? I'll tell you right now, for me, it's a it's a flat no. Uh, every time Duke makes um, the Final Four, a puppy dies or something. I don't know. Uh, Duke's just the worst. Anyway, um, I'm John Lauder. That's Christian Heimel. We'll come back in just a minute here. We'll break down the Midwest region, and we'll do that all right here inside the Cheap Seats. Kirby, host of Cinema Stories here on Public House Media. Thanks for listening to the following broadcast on Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope you'll come check out my show, Cinema Stories, where we hang out and just talk movie and TV news and reviews, and it's awesome. A new show comes out every single Tuesday. Don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of Cinema Stories. Thanks again for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Thank you, thank you, thank you. You're far too kind. Uh, woo. Yeah. Ready? Woo. Uh, woo. Let's go. Can I get an encore? Do you want more? Cook and roll with the Brooklyn boys. So for one last time, I need y'all to roll. Uh, uh, uh. I love this song. I don't care what anybody says. The Jay-Z version of this song is the best version of this song. Well, the, the best version of anything is Jay-Z. <laughs> it's unbelievable. Uh, we're in the cheap seats here, Chris and I, with John Lauder. This is the type of conversation that you get in the cheap seats every single day, Monday, Wednesday, Friday, you know, all that stuff. Even when we're not on the air, you, this is the conversation that you get with us in the cheap seats uh, as we hear our break, bracket, break it, bracket, <laughs> bracket, break it. Already. Down. We're going to figure it out. I don't know what's happening out. over there with you. We're going to figure it out at some point here, but here we go. Uh, as we're talking uh, tournament challenge here, of course, for, don't forget to join us here in our uh, public house media tournament challenge. Uh, Christian Iwell, John Lauder, as we move over to the Midwest region where the Kansas Jayhawks, the number one seed, Big 12 champions. And this was if this was going to be the year, John, that Bill Self didn't win a Big 12 title, whether it be regular season or tournament title, yeah, it was going to be crazy. this year. And somehow it was rock chalk once again for, for Kansas. And, and they're the number one seed here in this region, in a region that, honestly, when I look at it, you and I, at the start of this whole show and myself included at the start of the season, the team that we both thought would win the national championship is sitting there in this region in the Michigan State Spartans. 
Yes, and uh, you know Kansas is an interesting number one seed. I mean, it, obviously, it's far um, from their most talented team. You know, under self. I mean, that's that's clear. Anybody that's watched Kansas knows that. Um, obviously, Devonte Graham has sort of taken over for Frank Mason. But look, the Jayhawks have been upset plenty of times before. They've lost to a nine seed or worse five different times, including Bucknell back in two thousand five, and Bradley, uh, thirteen seed back in two thousand six. And look, obviously. Um, they're not going to lose in the first round. But I will say that UPenn may be the best 16 seed ever. It's certainly possible um, that they may be the best 16 seed ever. So, And look, this is Kansas. So I don't think they're going to win by 40, but they're also not going to lose in the first round. But after that, I mean, look, I, I do have Kansas in the Elite Eight, but it's only because my path for them is so ridiculously easy. And I'll explain more about that in a minute. Uh, but I don't think they're that good. And you mentioned Michigan State, who I still think is tremendous. Duke is a two seed. Auburn's the four. This is another one of those regions like the West, where, though I do think Kansas is very deserving of a number one seed, I, d- I would not be surprised if they didn't even make it to the Elite Eight. I mean, I, yeah. the, the chance is there. I mean, you, you look at them, and you're right. I mean, Penn is a great... And, oh, man, could you imagine just once to have one NCAA tournament game in the palestra? How awesome that would be. Um, that would be awesome. I mean, it'd be great. But, I mean, you're right. Looking at these, the top four seeds in this region with Kansas, Duke, Michigan State, and Auburn are all that if you kind of just jumbled it up and reseeded it again, it wouldn't be that surprising. Now, Michigan State is a three seed is the one that really does not surprise me at all because yeah. as scary as they are and as talented as you and I think they are, the fact that they bowed out as early as they did in the Big Ten tournament is really concerning. I mean, they're two and four against the top twenty-five in the country. Their their BPI rank is is very high, but at the same time, when you look at their losses, number one Duke, a bad Ohio State team, and twice to Michigan. I mean, those are their four losses this year. It, they're a great three-point shooting team, but one of the uh, every now and again they really just kind of let things happen. Like again, I saw them at they're Iowa. They're very inconsistent. Yeah, I saw them at Iowa earlier this year, and there was a point in that game where I'm like, all right, I'm going to get in the car and go home. And then Iowa had a chance to tie them at the buzzer and send them into overtime all of a sudden. So they're one of those teams that if they turned on, and but here's the issue. It's Tom Izzo as a head coach. And, and, and March Madness is Tom Izzo's time. So I, I'd never really count out the Spartans when it comes time for the tournament. But they're one of those teams that it's, it's just weird to see them at that three seed considering what we thought about them all season long. Yeah, uh, and and obviously your favorite team, the Oklahoma Sooners, are in this region oh, uh, as the 10 seed. Um, and, I, and I do think that they beat Rhode Island just because I think Trey Young will have one really nice game and then Duke will smack them up uh, in the round of, of 32. Um, and look, <laughs> we already talked about this. Oklahoma was 4-11 and in their last 15 games. Yes, they started the season 14-2 and and they were in the top five. Did you just fake vomit there? Yes, I did. Yes, I did. Oh, that was lovely. Um they were 14-2 to start the season in the top five in the country, and they have had some nice wins, but they're Trey Young and just a bunch of dudes, and that's not going to be enough against the team. By the way, I'm team. picking Rhode Island in this simply because of, they should, of Rhode Island should be beating Louisville and not Oklahoma in this round. Oh, cry me a river. Nobody cares about <laughs> Louisville. Um, but, yeah, it, I mean, and look, I would like to see Rhode Island win. I just think that Trey Young will have one good game, and that'll be it. My upset here is the College of Charleston. Now, look. Uh, full Ooh, and complete disclosure. Yeah. Um, obviously, they're the CAA team. And not only that, um, my brother-in-law's fiance went to the College of Charleston. Okay. Um, so there's some bias there. And <laughs> I have them going to the Sweet 16. <laughs> no, stop it. Yeah, yeah, I do. I do. Yeah, and uh, I do. Uh, yeah, seriously. Seriously. I have them beating Auburn and Clemson. All right, I'm gonna give you a two for here for for my upset. Uh, <laughs> it, it's kind of, this this is the part that I hate about the first four because you can't you're kind of screwed if you pick one of those teams to advance. I swear, if and you pick Syracuse, I'm, I I I'm I got show Arizona anymore. State beating TCU. Okay, good. Oh, Arizona that's fine. State beating TCU with my 11 six. That's fine. I, I like what what Coach uh, Hurley has over there. I think they're a talented enough squad to do that, and then they'll go and get wrecked by Michigan State. And then the other one that I got, which I'm hesitant to take, I don't think I'm actually going to make this pick, but you know this probably more than anybody here uh, associated with the cheap seats. There are three seniors that have the most pressure on them in the country, 
and they play in East Orange, New Jersey. Uh, the mm. Seton Hall Pirates in that 8-1 matchup against Kansas yeah. is a really intriguing upset pick for me just because oh, come on. Stop you, know it. How much, you know how much those seniors and Kevin Willard no. are going to put pressure on that team oh to be able to come God. away with something and get to the Sweet 16. I don't Look, know. That's if, more I, ridiculous than me picking Charleston. Come oh, on. No, it's not. I don't know if I'm. I don't know if I'm going to pick Seton Hall to go against to beat Kansas, but that to me, I think, is is the most intriguing potential upset there in this round. Oh, Kevin Willard couldn't coach an NBA team to beat Kansas. He's the worst. <laughs> oh, come on. Look, I, I I'm just hoping Seton Hall gets past NC State again, and that's also a family thing for me. Wife, brother-in-law went to Seton Hall, mm-hmm. and look, I'd love to see the Pirates go in the whole thing, but that's not going to happen. Um, there's no way they're going to beat Kansas. That would be insane. Um, and then at the bottom of the bracket, I think we probably feel the same way. I would also pick Arizona State if I could guarantee it was them. But right. just in case it's Syracuse, I loathe them so much that I pick TCU um, just because I could never pick Syracuse ever. Um, but look, if Arizona State wins, I'll be rooting for them to win, and I hope they do. Um, but I've got Michigan uh, State and then Duke. Um, and then I've got Michigan State uh, over Kansas, and I've got two three seeds in the Final Four, and I've got two Michigan teams in the Final Four, and Michigan and Michigan State. Um, I, I and look, I I just love what Michigan State has on that team, and and as inconsistent as, as they've been, when you only lose four times, and your head coach is Tom Izzo, you're probably in pretty good shape. Yeah, you and I are are, are really kind of on the same page with a lot of this stuff here. Um, I. The only top four. Now wait, hold I, on a minute. Did you actually yeah. put Seton Hall on your bracket challenge? No, I, I no. It, that, that's just the number. That to me, that's the biggest upset to watch in in that. that in I mean, that would be amazing. I hope it happens. We awesome. You know, I I don't think it happens ultimately because listen after because then Seton Hall would play Charleston and my family would just break apart. <laughs> <laughs> Well, That'd be amazing. first off, first off, Clemson's going to get to the to the Sweet Sixteen. Yeah, one. probably. Uh, yeah, probably. <laughs> number two is as much as I as much as it's an intriguing upset for me to take Seton Hall in that eight one matchup. I don't think Angel Delgado has enough, um, and I don't think that that bench has no, enough. Me either. Uh, NZ is a talented kid, but coming off the bench, he's not going to be enough to go against the likes of Kansas and, and Devontae Graham um, and those guys. I mean, it's just it's it's just one of those things that again experience plays a lot into this number one and there's a lot of game experience on the Seton Hall side but there's a lot of big game experience on the Kansas side and there is oh, a yes. difference between game and big game uh, and, and I do think ultimately Bill Self out coaches Kevin Willard in that matchup as obvious as that may sound to you um, but I do have Kansas Clemson Michigan State Duke and much like I can never have a single New York Yankee on my fantasy team, I can never have Duke winning a national championship. <laughs> so Michigan State <laughs> will get past the the Blue Devils, even though Grayson Allen may get you know ejected for a hip check at some point in that game uh, on Miles Bridges. Oh, God, uh, and I do have again because, and this is the thing, and uh, I I picked Michigan State at the beginning of the season to win the national championship. So obviously I have them going to the Final Four. Yeah, the, the only way that Duke gets to the Final Four is if. You know, Bagley's going to start, you know, throwing up 35-15s. That, that's their only shot. Listen, if Marvin Bagley um, plays like Kennedy Meeks did last year, look out. Duke is yeah. going to be a very scary team. Yeah, for sure. So that will do it for us here in the Midwest region. So we've got just one region left, the East region, with Villanova as the number one seed and Christian's, you know, love life, the Purdue Ballmakers. Will oh. Christian pick Purdue to go to the Isaac final? Isaac Haas. Isaac oh, Haas. Christian loves him some Haas. Haas avocados, Isaac Haas. He's a big fan of anything with the word Haas in it. So we'll be back here in just a moment. We'll break down the East region. Christian will drool all over Purdue. And you're going to listen to it all right here inside the Chief Seats. This is Daniel Poppy, host of How to Write Good here on Public House Media. I just want to thank you for listening to the following broadcast brought to you by Public House Media. Once you're done with this episode, I hope that you'll come check out my show, How to Write Good the writing show that is not about writing. A new show of How to Write Good comes up every Wednesday, so don't forget to subscribe on iTunes so you never miss an episode of How to Write Good. Again, thanks for checking out the following broadcast on Public House Media. Glorious. I have so many questions about the commercial that we just played. 
so many questions. Like, uh, like what? Like, it's called How to Write Good, but it doesn't involve writing. Yeah, I mean... And the other thing is, isn't it How to Write Well? Uh, again, it's How to Write, not How to Speak. Yeah, that's fair. We'll try to get Daniel on the show. Explain. Yeah, you know, we need to get every single host <laughs> on our show, because I have so many questions. And you know well, what I really should be doing, is I should just be quitting my job and listening to all these podcasts. But I do have a wife, a mortgage, and two children. Well, um, listen, I mean, when they beat us, and they're doing yeah, right. the tournament challenge, we'll bring them on, we'll ask about their thoughts on how they actually did everything. Yeah. You know. They probably, we'll you know, have yeah, they probably have their lizard picket or something. John Loder yeah. and Christian Heimler here inside the cheap seats on Public House Media Network. Make sure you, look, you've got way, a lot. By the way, yes. go to, yes. please, thephmedia.com. Check out all of our wonderful podcasts. We yes. joke here, but but they are, they yes. are great. I mean, there's no, they are great, great, great ones here. They are great. Uh, but yeah, we love them. We really do. Of course. No, we do. I, I Look, I kid. Okay. <laughs> I mean, come on. Our show's called The Cheap Seats, and I talked about, you know, like a puppy dying before. So, <laughs> you, you know, it, it's, it's not as though we're, we're winning Marconi's over here. Anyway. Um, you got you got a bunch of homework to do, okay? You've got to follow us on Twitter, especially uh, Christian, because you're going to want that Red Sox. Uh, Red Sox. Oh, God, I'm going Boston right here. You're going to want that Red Sox. Oh, my God, oh. J.D. Martinez. Chris Sale oh, looked yeah. awesome, by the way, the other day. Yeah. Oh, God, baseball's the worst. Anyway, um, you're going to want to follow Christian at Chris Heimel, uh, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I-M-A-L-L. If you want to follow somebody that retweets a lot, that would be me at John underscore Lauder, J O N underscore L-A-U-D-E-R. You should be consuming our podcast in as many ways possible, liking it, commenting on it, you know, sending us cash, whatever you can do. Um, make sure you go to the phmedia.com so you can figure out how to write good and how to have coffee with Keith and Kate and all those other great things. Um, and if you like our Facebook page, if you answer the poll question, the answer is St. Mary's, by the way. And if you like the Public House Media uh Facebook page, you can be eligible to win this tournament and get a t-shirt with our faces on it or something. Um, so that'll be great. Um, we're going to break down the West region now. That's not true. Uh, the East region, that's what happens when you read the rundown instead of looking at the actual bracket. Um, we're going to break down the East region. Villanova's the number one seed. Um, they're very good. We all know that. Uh, Purdue, Christian's love child, is the two seed um, with Isaac Haas and the Edwards brothers and Matt Painter and you know, oh, that Big Ten there. grittiness and all that jazz. Big Ten. Um, you got, <laughs> you've got Texas Tech as the three, and you've got Greg Marshall playing Marshall in the first round. At My head just exploded. That's ridiculous. <laughs> um, How and awesome then, is that, by the way? Uh, yeah, it's fantastic. And uh, you've also got um, an Alabama team that's a pile of heaping garbage, except for Colin Sexton, who may be the best player in the country that's not Trey Young. Um, so this is a super interesting bracket. Um, I mean, obviously, Villanova's the team to beat, duh. Yeah, uh, but, I mean, outside of yeah. Villanova, there's a lot of who knows in this bracket. Right, you know, I agree. I mean, there, there's definitely there's a 100% chance that Murray State could beat West Virginia. Same with Marshall sure. beating Wichita State. Same with, yes. you know, there's a chance that you could have complete chalk in this bracket. You know, I mean, yep. Stephen F. Austin, as talented as, as they can be, I mean, they're not the best team, obviously. I mean, 28-6 is nice, but, I mean, they played nobody. Their BPI is 109. Um, right. You know, and their their best their best game of the year, like they beat LSU by one, woohoo! They lost to Missouri by one without Michael Porter Jr., woohoo! Um, but here's the thing, they are a tremendous like Stephen F. Austin's a tremendous defensive team, leading the nation in turnovers per turnovers forced per game, and that's a huge thing when you can play that kind of crazy defense. It just messes people. VCU a few years ago called it havoc. I mean, when you can do that to a team, it really messes with you. So, especially in that first round for a Texas Tech squad that has had some injuries to deal with, Stephen F. Austin is going to be a really interesting matchup for them. But again, this is also one of those regions that, much like the uh, much like the the Midwest, could have complete chalk in the Sweet 16. Yeah, and, and Florida is seated two highs of six. Um, I've got St. Bonaventure beating UCLA and then beating Florida as well. I, the Gators are so, kind of ho hum this year. Um, and how you had mentioned that Seton Hall, Kansas was your sort of interesting second round, uh, one seed situation. For me, that's Alabama and Villanova. Yeah. And look, I, Alabama is not even in the same class as Villanova. But if Colin Sexton's going to score 40 points, yeah. Alabama's got a shot. So I am hoping, just for entertainment value, that Alabama wins their first round game against Virginia Tech and, and at least can, you know, give Villanova a scare. Um, I like West Virginia, though. I could see Murray State winning. 
I've got Wichita State, though, going to the Sweet 16 along with Villanova. Then in the bottom of the bracket, um, I do like the Red Raiders, and uh, I'm going to go with your Boilermakers to beat Butler. So I've got uh, the top four in the Sweet 16 in this bracket. Uh, but I agree with you that there's a lot of question marks. Other than Villanova, you just don't know exactly what you're going to get um, because all of these teams have been inconsistent other than Villanova. They've all looked great at times, and then they've looked kind of, you know, so-so at times. Um, it, it, it's a weird bracket. In my opinion, it's the easiest bracket for a one seed. Um, I, you know, I, can I, would agree with that, yeah. I would be stunned if Villanova did not get to the final four, yeah, I, I, I would. I hundred percent agree with that. Now, listen, I mean, I'm going to go, I'm going honestly full chalk here. I do think Butler beats uh, Arkansas in that 10-7. I think Purdue beats Butler. I've got Villanova, Wichita State, Texas Tech, Purdue. And, and the reason why I have Wichita State in there is because as much as I, I want to pick West Virginia, I really do, but they have disappointed me the last few games that I've watched. Yeah. Um, you know, they haven't played as well as they probably should. They're similar to Virginia. I mean, they score more than Virginia, but their game is solely based off their defense. And if you can find a way to run out that defense, that press Virginia style, uh, if you have that ability, you're going to find a way to win. And as as great as Javon Carter is, tremendous defensive player, three steals a game, all-around player, really, 17 points, five rebounds, six and a half assists, three steals per game. He's tremendous. But this is a team that... They lost, had lost five of six in the middle of the year, but won five of their last six prior to losing to the champion, losing to Kansas in the championship game of the Big Twelve. What I love, though, is again we talk about game experience and big game experience. This is a Wichita State team that has a lot of guys back uh, from a couple of years ago. Six players averaging more than eight points a game. Um, Landry Shamit is is a lot of fun to look at and to watch him play. Uh, is going to be a, a, a lot of fun as well. But, and Greg Marshall just coaches in these big games. So I got Wichita State advancing simply because they've got so many of those four-year, three-year guys with all that experience. Absolutely. Um, I, I just made a change, by the way. I, 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 I've given up on Charleston. I'm, I'm, I'm sorry <laughs> to my family. Um, but anyway, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, I, I, I've got a... I've got Auburn now. I'm going to the Sweet 16. So sorry to All my right. family. Anyway, um, I, you know, I, because here, here's the thing. I, I just want to beat Keith and Katie. And if I'm picking teams like Charleston, that's not going to happen. Not happen. So it, it's not. Um, and if, and if you're going to, you know, I, I know you're not, but if you were going to be picking Seton Hall over Kansas, you wouldn't be beating them either. So I, no, I wouldn't um, be. You're right. No, you're right. Um, we're basically, we're both right and we're geniuses. That's really what we're trying to say here. That's what we're trying to um, say, yes. Yeah. So I'm, I'm also chalk in, in this East region. I've got Texas Tech over Purdue. I'm not even really 100% sure why. Um, I just think Keenan Evans will play well. Uh, Purdue does have the height advantage, but Texas Tech, um, play real well all year in a very good Big 12. Um, and, and I, you know, I, I don't want to do one twos all the time. I mean, I'm, 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 no, it's not, I, I'm, that's I'm, not fun. <laughs> yeah, I'm, uh, I'm really grasping at straws here because I don't love Purdue or Texas Tech, and I'm picking Villanova anyway, so I really don't care who wins that game. Um, you know, just for, you know, something different, I guess I'm going to go with Texas Tech and I've got Villanova in the Final Four. But really, you know, it would not surprise me if Purdue won. They've had an excellent season. Whatever. One of those two teams will win and then lose to Villanova, and that's really all I've got on that. All right. So then well, as we're sitting here in the cheap seats, we've gone through all these regions here. Uh, we've got a few minutes left, John, so let's get to your final four here in San Antonio come the end of March. So what I've got here in the final four, and, you know, it, it doesn't give me great joy uh, because I've got a ACC team in here that's not North Carolina, um, so that's kind of a bummer, but... You know, the one positive is I don't have Duke, so that, you know, that makes everybody happy. Um, so my final four, whoa, that's large. Uh, sorry, I'm trying to, you know, get my uh, my bracket up here so I can actually read the whole thing. Um, so I've got uh, Virginia, Michigan, Michigan State, and Villanova, which I think would be a tremendous final four. Um, I think, you know, very few people would be upset about that. Well, actually, a lot of people would, but I think in, in just in terms of viewing, it would be excellent. Um, I've got Virginia beating Michigan. I, I, you know, I've got Virginia winning the whole thing. I, to me, unless they just completely fall off a cliff, they're too disciplined, they're too smart a team, and their defense is just too difficult. Um, and I've got Villanova going back. Jay Wright, 
Uh, what he's done the last five years at Villanova is one of the best five-year runs we've seen in college basketball. Um, with Jalen Brunson and Booth and Bridges, you know, Pascal, they're just, you know, DiVincenzo, such a balanced, deep team as well. It'll be a tremendous game. I've got Virginia winning 78-74 and uh, winning their first national championship, correct? First one. Um, I believe so. They didn't win with Ralph Sampson, right? No, they did not. So yeah, that would be that would be the. They lost their... to Shamanad with Ralph Sampson. You're right. You're 100 percent right there. So uh, um, so yeah, I've got Virginia cutting down the nets for the first time. You and I are very similar in 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 this. Um, I, I have the same Final Four: Virginia, Michigan, Villanova, and Michigan State. Um, I do have Virginia in the championship game. Uh, again, like I said, like I've said before, like you and I have said, they're just so talented defensively, and this Final Four should be incredible if it's these four teams um, because you've got two great defensive squads in Virginia and Michigan, two teams playing very well at the best time to be playing well. And then you've got two teams uh, in Villanova and Michigan state that are coached by tremendous guys who have been to these multiple times over the last couple of years and understand what it takes to win. I have though, and, and this might be because I'm trying to save face from October when I predicted it at the start, I have Michigan state, beating Villanova because I, I, I feel like I have to stick with them. And I, I still think they That's are the fair. best team put together. Miles Bridges to me is still the best player in the country. Uh, when you look at it, his numbers may not show it. His flashiness may not show it, but they are a team that is just, I think tremendous. And I have uh Sparty on in, in, in the, in the finals, they're winning 74 65 over Virginia, just because I think from an efficiency standpoint, um, I think Michigan State will be able to find a way to eke that out uh, a little bit there. So I got Michigan State as your national champion here over Virginia. Love it. So uh, we're here inside the cheap seats. We've broken down all the regions now. Uh, You should do absolutely nothing of what we've said. Do it completely differently, and you're likely to be very successful. Um, If you want to compete in our ESPN Tournament Challenge along with myself, Christian, Baxter, Max, Jeff, Keith, Katie, The Coffee, you name it, um, you've got to make sure to go to the Cheap Seats Facebook page, Public House Media Facebook page. you got to like them both, um, submit a bracket, and you can win a T-shirt with someone's face on it, hopefully mine. Um, so y- you have to do that. Also, make sure you go and vote for St. Mary's in the poll so I can be right for once. That would be nice. Um, and then lastly, uh, Christian, we'll do our Mojo Monday, yeah. um, and I will let you go first. Yeah, so I, usually I'm a, I'm in the good mood, but I'm kind of in a, a bad mood a little bit, and it, it was kind of turned off because of what happened over the weekend here. So my bad mojo uh, here is for CBS Sports uh, as a whole. A couple weeks ago, CBS Sports loses out on Thursday Night Football, Fox taking that over. Now, whether CBS really cares about that or not, who knows? The ratings have been down because the games have been terrible. Um, so there's that, number one. Number two is the fact that Turner Sports has really kind of taken over March Madness. And when you think about March Madness, you think about, uh, you know, Gumbel there with Barkley in studio on CBS on the selection show. You think about, um, you know, Jim Nance calling the Final Four on CBS, Bill Raftery uh, and all of that. You don't think of Ernie Johnson on TNT. You don't think, uh, you know, on TBS where the selection show was on Sunday. And then to, by the way, mention the selection show which was an absolute travesty of epic proportions. A live studio audience, which meant nothing. I would have, what I would have loved to have had was um, maybe one of those bubble teams there live in studio and to watch them go nuts would have been kind of fun. But then you announce all the teams in alphabetical order before you do the bracket? What was the point of that? The whole point of the bracket reveal and, and, John, I've been a part of a team that went to two NCAA tournaments in the Manhattan Jaspers a couple of years ago when they won back-to-back titles. The best part of that day is sitting there with everybody, waiting to find out what your seed is and where you're going to play. Exactly. And as an at-large team or as a bubble team, you don't want to sit there and know you're in before knowing who you're going to play. It's the fun of, like, you know, for instance, that play-in game. For uh, Let me see here as I go back and look at the bracket. The, the, it's the fun of a team like... Um, let me see, as I, Loyola Chicago, you know, it, it, it's, it's a, of who are we going to play? What's our seed? And then losing your mind when you finally get there. St. Bonaventure and UCLA is the perfect one there. Are we going to get that, that uh, playing game? Are we going to have to play somebody great? Who are we going to go up against? Uh, all those things. That's the fun part. And CBS uh, really just botched this badly. Um, 
and, and they've really kind of struggled with CBS Sports, I think, over the last couple of weeks. You even look at it, for the most part, CBS has given up a lot in terms of their sports uh, side of things. So CBS Sports, in my opinion, is, is my bad mojo here. Yeah, for, for me, uh, I'm going to go with good mojo um, for the Hurley brothers. You know, um, mm-hmm. Bobby Hurley for Arizona State getting in, Danny Hurley with URI. Obviously, everything that happened with St. Anthony's this past year for Bob Hurley Sr., I'm sure, it, you know, very happy for him to have both his sons coach in the NCAA tournament. Uh, the Hurleys are, you know, uh, a sort of a first family in basketball, not just in New Jersey, but, you know, in college basketball and beyond. And, you know, both of those coaches – are, are going to be headed to, to bigger places, I think, sooner rather than later. But nice for both of them uh, to get their teams into the NCAA tournament. And uh, I think, you know, Bob Hurley Sr. and his wife are going to be making a lot of plane trips uh, for the next week here. So oh, they're, my, uh, they're, they're my good mojo. And they're a good one to have. I mean, you're absolutely right. The Hurleys are like that, like you said, the first family of basketball. So it's awesome for them. That's going to do it for us here on our uh, NCAA Bracket Breakdown Preview Show. The games begin tomorrow night in Dayton with the first four. Uh, they really start in earnest on Thursday, though. This is the best time of year where it's nonstop basketball. You get that sick day. You get to you know skip out of class like John and I used to do when we were in college and just sit in the sit in the conference room of our radio station and just watch basketball for 19 straight hours, uh, maybe making a trip to Taco Bell or Jim's Deli in between. Anyway, we don't do that anymore. We've gotten wiser in our years, supposedly. So, Uh, Don't forget to join our challenge, of course, the Public House Media Facebook page and the Cheap Seat Sports Podcast Facebook page. Join us, beat us, win some fun prizes. Don't forget to share us, subscribe, rate, review on iTunes, Google Play, Spreaker.com, Stitcher.com, of course, thephmedia.com as well. Follow John Lauder on Twitter at J-O-N underscore Lauder, L-A-U-D-E-R. You can follow me on Twitter as well at Chris Heimel, C-H-R-I-S-H-E-I-M-A-L-L. Vote on our daily podcast, uh, daily poll on Facebook, which was the biggest snub, St. Mary's or Louisville. And as always, we appreciate you guys joining us all the way up here in the cheap seats.